What a pleasant surprise. Fancy seeing a familiar face around this time of night. Care to join me in the carriage? The rain will only get worse, judging by how thick the clouds are. It would be a shame to ruin such elegant clothes, my dear. A runny nose wouldn't suit you either. Good choice. You would have caught your death out there in the cold. Look at you, poor thing, all soaked. Here, take my coat to warm yourself up again. You are shivering. There you go. Are you heading anywhere in particular? It is rather late for somebody like you to be walking around alone. Bad things happen to pretty faces around here, especially at this hour. What unfortunate timing. The rain must have begun right as you were on your way back. I'm glad I noticed you, then. It may not be far to your residence, but without an umbrella, it would have been quite an uncomfortable journey. Having you here gives me an idea. However, I'm on my way to the theater. Would you care to join me? If nobody's expecting you at home, of course. I planned to go with a friend of mine, but they didn't feel like mingling tonight. So now I have an extra ticket to the play, and letting it go to waste would be quite a shame. Lovely. I hoped you'd be interested. Today is the opening performance of the discarded son, and I couldn't help myself. You know, I have a weak spot for the arts. And with the prospect of seeing an intriguing drama, I simply had to. It would be a pleasure to take you. And please don't feel like a replacement. I was attempting to cheer up my friend and get them among people, but it seems they don't feel ready for that quite yet. Were the circumstances any other, I might have asked you to go with me. However, Valentine is going through a rather difficult phase at the moment, and I try to keep them from isolating. But sometimes it might be best to give people time to recover before dragging them out of their comfort zone again. Caterpillars, too, need to stay in their cocoon to become majestic butterflies. For us humans, it is more self-reflection than discorporation, but the result is similar enough, in my opinion. Enough about that. I'm certain all will be well in due time. For now, though, would you care for a glass of mild wine? Lord de Vorak gifted me a fine bottle just earlier today, and I've been wondering whom to share it with. And I'm certain it will be to your taste, my dear. The Lord is very careful about selecting gifts, and from what I've heard, this particular kind has a very light taste. I'm not too fond of strong alcoholic notes myself, after having a fair share of drunken experiences, it eventually begins tasting of bad decisions and memories, best forgotten. Here you go. Have a taste if you'd like. But be careful not to spill on yourself, dear. Wine stains tend to be rather tedious. <laughs> I suppose having wine glasses in my carriage is a little strange. But I bought them only a few moments before I noticed you on the street. I realized my old set was, well, not a set anymore. And I figured some new glasses were in order. These are much nicer than my old ones. And a lot finer, too. The thin glass is quite pleasant to look at. 
but I worry it might be a little fragile. I suppose I'll have to hope they last a little longer than the previous set. Last time, a rather rowdy guest began breaking them after getting upset. Some people can handle rejection well. Another begin throwing tantrums and the host's wine glasses, it appears. Luckily, nobody was injured and only the glasses were destroyed. All else remained mostly untouched. Drunken people tend to be quite the hassle. That's part of the reason I mostly swore off liquor. But every once in a while, a glass of wine or two, with such lovely company, is simply too tempting. Hmm. Such a pleasant flavor. I've never tasted anything like this before. Have you? It reminds me of spring. Dear, are you alright? The rope must have had it. Fuck. You're bleeding. Don't. D don't look at me. Just t take this handkerchief. Yes, it may only be a small cut, but please. Just press it on the wound. You looked at me, didn't you? You noticed the change in my eyes. I promise you, nothing will happen as long as you cover the wound. I said cover it. Now. <sighs> Great. The second glass broke in. Still have to get used to the grip strength. You really have a death wish, don't you? For Christ's sake. No, don't. Don't take it off. Just keep it pressed on there. I'll be fine. God, that smell. Listen. You have to stay calm. I can hear your heartbeat getting faster. And for Christ's sake, you have to keep holding that handkerchief. I apologize, dear. I, I lost my temper for a moment. You're sorry. This situation cannot be blamed on you. It's my fault for withholding information about myself. But in my foolish mind, I... I hoped I'd be able to keep it a secret. I'm so sorry. You look terrified. Trembling from the cold, the, the shock, or the fear. Perhaps all, all three at once. I assure you, you're safe. I, I can't control myself. You must think of me as some kind of maniac. And I admit, were I a normal person, this kind of reaction would be... strange, to say at least. But be not afraid, my dear. And allow me to explain. I've kept this from you for selfish reasons. But I've been infected with vampirism. An illness of the mind and body alike that makes one behave more animalistic than they may wish. A sickness slowly chipping away your sanity until all that you are has been stripped to the core. What remains is only a poisoned, black-beating heart that 
offers a glimpse into what the opposite of humanity might look like. Where it boiled and filtered into an essence of pure darkness and evil. It makes the infected yearn for blood. But I've never felt such a strong reaction over simply smell before. And all my years of suffering from this affliction never... Never has such a small cut been enough to induce the switch within me. Perhaps it's because I know you. Because you mean something to me as a person. As cruel as the implications of that would be. Perhaps it has to do with the wine and the Lord did it on purpose to sabotage me. Or... Perhaps it's simply you. I, I... I was worried you would fear me once you knew. But I'm not sure how to interpret that expression on you. Are you terrified? Intrigued? In shock even? Whatever you may feel. I understand if this means you prefer keeping your distance from now on. I will ask the driver to get you home directly. What's that supposed to mean? How could you possibly entertain the thought of being in this confined space with me? After seeing my reaction to even the tiniest drop of your blood? How could you possibly look into these hungry eyes and feel... Unthreatened. How can you feel comfortable knowing that the slightest fracture of your skin I might leap at you and won't be able to stop myself? A friend of mine recently had an incident. They weren't able to stop. I don't want you to end up like that lifeless body in my arms. Your lifeless body. You don't deserve to end up like that. Nobody deserves to end up like that. But if I could save only one person from ever enduring that same fate, it would be you. I cannot let you fall for your demise simply because you put your trust in me. was selfish of me to try to befriend you. Vampires and humans should never interact with one another. I should have been honest with you, or at least saved both of us the struggle of getting involved. I might hurt you, and even if I don't, you will die within what feels like the blink of an eye. We were never meant to meet, and it was foolish of me toy with fate as I did. I cannot possibly entertain the thought of you staying near me after these most recent events. You can never be safe by my side. And I can never truly be at ease knowing that I'm merely paper cut away from becoming a murderer, from killing a person I, I care about. An innocent human being. You deserve so much better, my dear. Even if that means I can never see you again. In the end, I can't tell you what to do. I can only suggest it might be best to stay away. Perhaps for tonight. We can pretend none of this happened and enjoy the play together. Tomorrow will be your choice to make. Take your time to think about it, my dear. Consider the danger and weigh your options. I promise I won't be upset either way. Not like I have much of a choice in the matter. <laughs>